Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Lancer Custom Works, where I will be discussing the various mech builds you could make and play with Lancer. Death's Head, like shooting very much. With the power of Neuralink to reroll your first ranged attack each round and perfected targeting to make your shot even more accurate, Death's Head can just headshot tyrants until human right improves, one way or another. Not only that, it has a heavy mount and main slash auxiliary mount that's almost equal to a heavy mount in damage potential anyway, that's a lot of damage. Its stat is very good, it even has a 20 sensor range, 20, sensor, range. The amount of bullshit you can do with 20 sensor range is absolutely ridiculous, the only problem is that Death's Head has low repair cap by even SSC standard, so don't get scratched, or better, don't get hit at all. With all these good traits and stats, Death's Head has a powerful but one of the most difficult core power to use, it's basically just sniper mode for even more damage, possibly reaching 10d6 damage in some builds, but you will need support from your allies to keep the target in optimum position for you to shoot at. Or you could just overcharge and instantly dome them in the same round. In the following 40 Death's Head builds, you will frequently find Core Siphon, because more accuracy is always nice, high stress mag clamps, because having a vantage point makes it easier to shoot at people, Vulture DMR, a very long ranged weapon with high accuracy, and Kinetic Compensator, because, Again, more accuracy, but only works with ranged attacks. You will need accuracy a lot for Death's Head, even on top of all its traits, trust me. So anyway, it's not a surprise that most of the Death's Head builds are artillery builds, with quite a lot of sub roles, there's plenty of short ranged weapons too, so there's also quite a few striker Death's Head too, the spider can dance quite well up close. Anyway, let's start off with the pure artillery Death's Head. Australia Nightmare is a very standard no-nonsense death's head build, that also made me quite concerned about what's going on in Australia. Other than the excellent vulture with missile for occasional AOE attack, railgun is an excellent long-ranged heavy weapon too, its only issue is the ordnance tag, so you can't move much to utilize its line pattern. Both of these are rifles, and benefit a lot from crack shot, a talent you will see a lot throughout death's head build for more accuracy and damage, it just works. With mag clamp to climb all over the place, kinetic compensator, and core siphon for more accuracies, tracking bug to keep the enemy from hiding, ghost weave and active camo to hide yourself, this death's head will do very well in popping head off from a distance. T time pretty much describes how death's head sniper builds sometimes felt like, you just sit back, relax, have a cup of tea, and fire your weapon at target of opportunity. This build has an uncle equipped anti-material rifle, which has its difficulty neutralized by auto stab, core siphon, crack shot, and AMR innate accuracy, freeing up action to stabilize every turn to reload it. With siege stabilizer for even more range, Roland chamber, and overpower caliber for more damage, and black thumb techno file combo to patch it up, the AMR can hit very hard, and you are going to hear the phrase hit very hard a lot to describe most if not all of the death's head build. And since a sniper death's head build won't be moving much, put a few point in Barbarossa, and you could get auto loader drone or even external ammo feed to just quick load your guns, all loading big guns are now perfect for death's head, bolt thrower, howitzer, and cyclone pulse rifle. Speaking of CPR, the one that's lethal to mecha, this is no barrier to stand in our way, a super stack cyclone pulse rifle death's head, because with heavy mount, death's head can bring in truly massive gun. It's just anti-material rifle death's head but on an even bigger scale, and anything it hits will be torn into pieces. And you know what, let's bring the other big guns, this is BITCHES LOVE CANNONS A siege cannon death's head because why snipe a single person when you can snipe a grid square. And with tacticians, just getting up a high vantage point with give you accuracy, which is easy to do with mag clamp and kai bioplating. However, heavy gunner does not work with super heavy weapons, so just replace with siege specialist or something. Here's work from home, a super massive tachyon lance death's head, not only Tachyon Lance has 20 range, it also deals 8 goddamn burn, which is just painful. With RSU, you can quick stabilize to quickly cool down as the Lance can get quite hot, and with Azura, you just have more actions to do things with, which is very useful when you want to nail someone with Mark for Death. And with Infiltrator, your first shot from Hidden will hit even harder, 
and you can quickly retreat before counter battery could occur. Of course, you don't need really massive gun to bring out the best of death's head, this is a sensation of water boiling beneath the skin, a paracausal smart gun death's head. Smart gun is a highly accurate cover ignoring weapon with 15 range, and with paracausal mod, it can now ignore armor and resistance too. With all the bonus damage stacked on it, plus walking armory for hellfire, you can easily set any target on fire. And if you need more firepower somehow, that's what the heavy machine gun is for. And just to be really, really, clear about mark for death, it specifically requires the target to be outside of cover, so even if smart gun seeking tag can ignore cover, it will not work, you need to have a clear line of sight to a target, so ironically, mark for death works quite well with blast weapon. And that's all on the artillery death's head, these builds are just really good at shooting down targets with highly accurate attacks, but of course, I know some of you felt that just clicking head all the time is a bit boring, which is why there's plenty of artillery builds that mix in other roles, time to talk about the artillery controller builds. This is you like jazz, how it works is very simple, this is a senti main death's head, it has a lot of nexus to bring the pain on people, black spot even gives more accuracy to nexus type weapon on a target. So basically, just pick someone you hate, and whittle them down with bees and a ton of negative effects, with death's head sensor range, gassed nexus could even reach a ridiculous 30 range by flying off on its own, and with a pair of tempest drones, nobody could ever get close to you without getting knocked back. Heck, why not bring in the big nexus, this is drone strike, an annihilation nexus death's head, which with death's head sensor range, could effectively grind up everything in or slightly beyond range 20. Target is hiding or invisible, use lotus projector, or just fire out turret drone as a fire and forget node for annihilation nexus, hidden targets in area pattern get hit just as well as if they are standing out in the open, nobody can escape from your bees. Or hell, just start flying instead and rain plasma death from above with SSC dragonfly, a flying plasma thrower death's head. Either send down the plasma while strafing, or just sit down and fire it so you can cool down with auto cooler, which if any enemy is too close, even better, now they are getting cooked thanks to explosive vent, they could even get extra cooked with havoc charges, the mine mode of which is quite safe to use because of its directional nature. And with combined arms, pointing the barrel right at someone's face is not a problem. Spider.exe is a pinyaka missile death's head, because of course there's one, one that likes to jump and hide and sneak around with ghost weave and infiltrator before sending down its payload like a goddamn metal gear. With Stormbringer, this death's head can knock its targets right into javelin rocket and wandering nightmare zone to deal more damage or make them really slowed, and since they cannot move as well now, might as well lob more missiles at them. But, you don't need the big missile to fully utilize Stormbringer, this is Rocket Spider, which has loads of launcher weapons, including Gandava missile which is highly accurate and do a lot of damage too. With Stabilizer mod, it can even reach range 20, at the cost of having Ordnance tag now, but that doesn't matter to Heavy Gunner to shoot even more missile, and with Stormbringer, it can easily knock people out of cover so its allies can gun them down, or you know, so you could do it yourselves. With 20 sensor range, Death's Head can also be a highly effective hacking platform, Horo S1 and 2 can be really good at screwing the enemy and protecting you or your allies at once, and honestly, throwing the enemy off is almost just as good as shooting them down, and this Death's Head can do both. And that's all for the artillery controller Death's Head, almost just as good in shooting down the enemies as playing them like a damn fiddle, I'm actually surprised that I didn't see more hacker controller Death's Head build with how much sensor range it has, 20 sensor range just make death's head very viable for a sniper hacker build, perhaps too viable. Anyway, let's move on to the artillery support builds. This is bossy sideline spider, a support death's head that doesn't just provide support fire with its nano comp AMR that can ignore cover, but also by sending out hive drone to provide cover, stasis bolt for defense, and horo s1 to puppet move allies by invading their system, it just works very well thanks to the 20 sensor range. And also, hacker talent, to counter hack enemy hacker and shut them down. Around every corner is a support death's head equipped with a nano comp rail gun, which basically let you nail someone right through wall as long as there's gap for it to get through, not only that, it has spotter and held image to throw lock on basically everywhere, making your allies attack a lot more accurate, and when you or your allies need cover, you got smoke. And of course, since death's head has a heavy mount, someone made a mimic gun build for it, this is I'm not even sure how to spell this, a mimic gun death's head with not as many talents for it as I thought, but it still makes it quite painful on anyone that gets hit by it. 
With Sisyphus, you can switch out any D20 with it for Mimic Gun, attack roll for you, your allies, and even the enemy, or even universal compatibility to reuse your core power and let you fully recover. And with Eye of Horus, you can see right through invisibility and hidden enemies within your sensor range, which might as well be everywhere with Death's Head sensor range, and if your allies need more help on hitting things, you have spotter for it. And finally, this is we see all and will hit all, another spotter Death's Head that likes to throw lock on on everyone, and if anyone consume one, Autopod will chase in to deal some damage. And if firepower doesn't work, you have Hor OS and Marker Light for some tech attack shenanigans, Marker Light even make sure the enemy you mark will get hit very hard by your allies. And that's it for the artillery support Death's Head, most of them perfectly capable of doing a ton of damage even with some points put towards supporting their allies on the battlefield, and finally, we have the artillery defender builds. This is the wall of guns, a leviathan death's head, because why shoot one big bullets when you can fill the air with bullets. Other than the big ass gun, this death's head can quickly build up a bunker and shield it with aegis to protect everyone inside, tracking bug lets them point out hidden and invisible enemies with ease. This is a paracausal railgun death's head that like to stay somewhere high and just keep shooting. No defense could work against the railgun, while Enclave Shield makes enemy attack miss more often against you and anyone else in the bubble. Combine that with Heavy Gunner for more immobilizing shots, and Flash Anchor to make sure you allies don't get moved, this Death's Head and its allies will stay where they want it to stay. This is a Death's Head with a Nano Comp Cyclone Pulse Rifle, because it can, it also has a backup in the form of a Nano Comp Vulture because it also can, with Grease Monkey, its allies will not run out of supply anytime soon, and with Ice Out Drone, they won't get affected by tech action either, or some random enemy hacker is going to get shut down completely. And finally, this is moral responsibility, a defender death's head with Argonaut shield, enclave support shield, stasis barrier, and stasis bolt to protect itself and its allies. And of course, it has plenty of guns, would be better if it has senti main for the light nexus though, but someone will get quite carved up if they attack this death's head. And that's all on the artillery defender death's head, with how much Death's Head preferred to stand still at a spot, having a defender side job doesn't exactly affect its mobility much, it will want to stay close to an ally anyway. But of course, those builds are for artillery Death's Head that like to stay away from frontline, most of the time. There's plenty of close ranged weapons that benefit from Death's Head traits, and there's plenty of builds to utilize those weapons, let's talk about the pure striker Death's Head. Region Left is a highly mobile striker Death's Head, using reinforced cabling and hunter 1 to have 8 terrain ignoring movement before striking down the target with the most accurate DSAS in the galaxy. With synthetic muscle netting, you can even brawl with foes twice your size, and if DSAS isn't enough, you have a nano carbon sword. And just to be really clear, core siphon doesn't just work with ranged attack, but also both melee and tech attack, this opens up quite a lot of possibilities. A somewhat larger atlas is exactly that, a half atlas death's head with Terashima blade to tactically cut shit up with JK1 and 2 to do some incredibly ninja stuff, though JK1 is a bit less effective on a size 1. With ace and flight capability, there's nowhere this death's head can't cut, and if there is, you have a railgun. Spiky spider is a death's head build that likes to hug people and then explode with bristle crown. I'm not sure what else to add besides that vanguard and return fire in gunslinger to add more chance to hit even more with it. And if you want to hit a room full of people, you have a daisy cutter, and yes, this works for mark for death. And that's all on the pure striker death's head, few, but almost just as lethal and terrifying as their big gun artillery counterparts, but of course, sometimes you just want to have a little more control. This is Guns Hooter, shooter of guns, a striker controller death's head with so many guns, including two DSAS, which thanks to death's head trait, kinetic compensator, vanguard one, and Brutal 3, is somewhat accurate. Roller Grenade keeps things away, and with Neuralink and Siege Stabilizer, all its guns will have enough range for Mark for Death to work and hit hard. This is Beckoner of Death, a Death's Head that likes to keep a group of enemies tightly packed with Beckoner and Horo S1, then just lightning them to death. And with Heavy Gunner immobilizing effects, they are going to be stuck in the exact same spot for what's left of their lifespan, though only the main Heavy Gunner target suffers the effect. And that's all on the striker controller death's head, very effective at close quarter combat, and gives anyone in its range a living hell. Now that's all 40 of the death's head builds, finish. Once again, I would like to thank all of the submitters for sending in their builds for this episode, 
I have been itching to see more super heavy builds, so this episode feels quite delicious to me for having so much firepower. Anyway, let's introduce the topic for the next week and oh no, oh no. Me. Anyway, with everything done, I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some coffee. links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.